Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy Amazing Boy Six One Nine, and today we're going to be reacting to WWE wrestlers' last words before their death. So, yeah, unfortunately, we're going to be doing this video today. Um, it's probably going to be very hard to like watch throughout. It's only like an eight-minute video, but still, there's going to be some pause. We're going to talk about it. So, yeah, this is going to be uh, very difficult. But, anyways, if you guys want to see more of this kind of content of WWE and stuff like that, any specific wrestler, then obviously comment down below, give a like, and subscribe if you're new. So we're going to be doing more of these kind of videos and uh, yeah, so I guess uh, let's get into today's video. Due to how Owen Hart died, his final words were very public. On May 23rd, 1999, WWE was hosting a pay-per-view mm. event from Kansas City, Missouri called Over the Edge. That night, Owen Hart was playing a superhero-themed character called the Blue Blazer. Fitting with his persona, WWE decided to have Owen lowered from the top of the arena and into the ring. However, there was a malfunction, and Owen fell to his death. While the show was broadcast mm. live, the viewers watching at home didn't see the fall because of a pre-recorded interview playing at that time. Well, Blue Blazer, you got a big match tonight. Going after the Intercontinental Championship taking on the Godfather. Ooh, the Godfather. Just saying his name makes my blue blood boil. However, these were not Owen's final words. In his last moments before his death, mm. Owen Hart showed exactly who he was. When Owen was falling, everybody that was there said the last thing that he yelled was, look out, a guy's fallen from 100 feet and he knows he's done. And the last thing he's thinking is, look out, I don't want to hurt you. <sighs> The sudden passing of Bray Wyatt yeah, shocked the entire rest um, of the world. Let me just pause this. That's what I was going to say. Like, you know, that was unnecessary. Like, it didn't even need to happen. Like, the whole planning of him just ascending him to the roof and then just, like, going down like that. Like, that was not even part of the plans originally. So, I don't know why it even had to happen. Uh, even this character they gave to him. But overall, like, the whole thing is just tragedy. Like, everybody loved Owen. Like, he was a funny guy. Everybody loved him, man, and it's like, you know, it was unfortunate what happened. It didn't need to happen. It was one of those where it's like, it wasn't necessary. I think they tried to do the same thing as what happened to Sting, um, with the uh, same thing he had in WCW, but this one thing just made everything just like a tragedy, and it was just unfortunate, like, you know, I wonder what he'd be doing today if that didn't happen, so I feel sorry for his family and everything, but... I think he was only 33 or 35, something like that. So he was very young when this happened, but nah, that's very sad. Let me just go back. From 100 feet, and really he bad. knows he's done. And the last thing he's thinking is, look out, I don't want to hurt you. The sudden passing of Bray Wyatt shocked the entire wrestling world. Mm. After disappearing from WWE for about six months to deal with an illness, it was reported on August 19th, 2023, that Bray was expected to make a return. I want to say one thing about this as well. Excited to like i remember he was gone for a while and even i was thinking like whoa like is wb like had enough of him or are they trying to like repackage him into something huge and then all of a sudden like i saw it on my facebook like i was just like scrolling down and then i saw a post and i was thinking no this is gonna be fake and then i'll go into instagram and i'm like oh my god like i could not believe it like that was unexpected we didn't know what happened to him and for that to happen that was so tragic like I couldn't believe it and it took a, almost a couple of weeks just to go over that because that just came out of nowhere. I couldn't believe what happened to Bray Wyatt, man. And wasn't it like a few years before then, like uh, who else died that was part of the Wyatt family? I think it was Luke Harper. So, you know, all the people in that faction, like Braun Strowman and that and yeah, I forgot the other one, Eric Warren, something like that. I feel sorry for them, but also for his, uh, what's it? Bray Wyatt's family man like they had to go through a lot and even to this day I'm just shocked like it's just couldn't believe it man man heartbroken just five days later when it was shared that the eater of worlds had died at the age of 36 due to a heart attack the final heart video attack. Bray Wyatt had posted to social media ended with this message I hope everyone out there that's hearing this I, I hope you take this from me be good to the ones you love mm always remind them about that and how much they mean to you because nothing is forever thank you for everything guys before bray's death another wyatt family member sadly passed away unexpectedly in december 2019 yeah. luke harper was luke released Harper. from his wb contract eight months after he requested it about three months later harper mm. made his aew debut under the name brody lee his run with the company though was cut short in october of that year mm. brody went on hiatus to attend to an injury sadly he never returned on december 26 2020 brody lee died the cause of death was Such idiopathic tragedy, pulmonary fibrosis a 
few days after Brody's passing, his wife shared the last text messages he sent her. In them, Lee told his wife how much he loved her and what he had planned for their future. Shad Gaspard mm. may not have had the most prestigious WWE career, but the decision that caused him to die was greater than any championship he could have won. In May 2020, mm, Shad one. and his 10-year-old son were swimming at Venice Beach in California. However, they got caught in a strong rip current and the Coast Guard came to rescue them. In this moment, Shad Gaspard would say his final words, save my son, save my son. Gaspard's child was rescued by the Coast Guard, but before Shad could be pulled to safety, he disappeared under the water. Three days later, the former so WWE wrestler's man. body would be washed ashore. WWE fans from the mid to late 2000s mm. will remember Umaga. Yeah, that was Despite just sad. A shorter WWE... Like, you know, at least the son got saved. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, save my son first. You put others before yourself. That's always going to be beautiful. And for that to happen... Uh, I feel sorry for the family again, uh, you know, you, that's why guys, like I always say this, like, you know, uh, you always got to stick to the ones that you love because you never know the next day they could be gone, man. And you just never know what's going to happen in life. So just enjoy life to the fullest because you never know what's going to happen the next day or the next week. So yeah career, the Samoan bulldozer accomplished a lot in his three years on the roster, feuding with names like John Cena, Triple H, Kane, and CM Punk. Additionally, Umaga mm. also won the Intercontinental Championship, which led to him competing in the famous Battle of the Billionaires match at WrestleMania. Match. However, in June 2009, Umaga was released from his WWE contract after violating their wellness policy and refusing rehab. Following his departure, Umaga continued to wrestle, working on the independent circuit. However, the Samoan bulldozer was set to make a return to WWE at the 2010 Royal Rumble, but sadly, that was Oh, happen. really? On December 4th, 2009, the third generation wrestler was found unresponsive in his home. After being taken to a hospital, it was discovered Umaga had suffered a heart attack. While on life support, the former WWE wrestler suffered a second attack that sadly ended his Damn. life. In his passing, Umaga left behind his wife and four children. Umaga's son, Zilla oh Fatu, shared his last memories of his father in a video on his YouTube channel. Yeah, I just want to say, like, I didn't even know that he was supposed to return. Like, I heard about it, but I didn't think it was, like, that close. Wow, like, that's so sad. And they, WWE tried to help him as well. Like, I don't know, like, the full context of what happened there, but it's like, they did try to help by the looks of it, you know? And it's like, it. what sucks even more is, like, he got released, and then, like, a couple months later, he just passed. Like, that is just sad, man. Like, I couldn't believe it as well. Um... But yeah, I mean, he deserved way more and, you know, uh, just the whole thing just sucks, man. Absolutely sucks. It was me and my dad playing a video game and we was, we was actually playing that year's Raw versus SmackDown. And uh, I was just beating him. <laughs> he used to get mad. After that, I had to go to sleep. I had uh, school the next day. My mom was like, hey, you got to go to sleep. Turn the game off. The last time he just told me, all right, son, I see you tomorrow. I love you. Gave him a big hug. Big hug. Yeah, that was like the last interaction that I had with my dad. Ashley Massaro's journey to becoming a WWE wrestler Sorry. was different than most. She competed in the third Diva mm. Search competition WWE hosted in 2005. Not only was she selected to be one of the eight contestants, but she won the entire thing as well, which earned her a WWE contract. After roughly three years at the company, though, Ashley asked to be let go so she could tend to her sick daughter. Following her departure, Massaro mm. would mostly leave the world of wrestling and would later become a DJ for a radio station in New York State. On May 15, okay. 2019, Massaro made a post on social media sharing that she had responded to some fan mail and thanked her supporters. This would be Ashley Massaro's final public words. The next day, after not showing up for work, paramedics went to Ashley Massaro's home where she was unresponsive. Once she was taken to the hospital, Massaro was pronounced dead. The cause of death was later revealed to be suicide. suicide. Macho Man Randy yeah. Savage is hands down one of the like, most iconic wrestlers of all time. That is like another thing as well. Like, you know, there was a lot of things like um, going on right now uh regarding vince and that and there's a video of uh him backstage with her like showering and stuff like that uh like with the whole context like now it looks really bad and yeah i guess she had a lot of problems in life but you know like i said rest in peace and uh you know to obviously you know hearts out to families and that uh fans as well like guys you gotta understand like you know some of these sub WWE superstars like they might not be like to you like the number one and stuff like that but they are to other people and they will always have fans so you know yeah you gotta understand that 
I think most of you do, but I see some comments, but it's like, it's not always what you think, guys, you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's just sucks. However, his departure from WWE wasn't sunshine and rainbows. WWE wanted Macho Man to retire and become a full-time commentator, while Randy Savage still mm. felt he had more to give. This disagreement ultimately led to the Macho Man leaving WWE and working against them by joining their competitor, WCW. Mm. Even after Savage left WCW, he never returned to WWE and mostly left wrestling altogether. However, it looked like a bridge between the two was starting to be made when Randy Savage partnered with WWE's toy manufacturer, Mattel. Sadly, nothing more okay. would come of this due to what happened on May 20th, 2011. Savage was out driving with his wife when he turned to her and said, I don't feel too good. Savage then suffered a heart attack, which caused the vehicle to crash. Macho Man's partner only suffered minor injuries, but Savage tragically died, with the cause of death being heart disease. In an eerie coincidence, the night before his death, Randy Savage was with his brother. Macho Man told his sibling he wasn't feeling well and said, I've had a great life. Almost as if Savage knew something was going to happen. Despite being one of the most popular like, female wrestlers of the late night. Well, that's the thing as well, like, that sucks is when, like, a superstar or just anyone in genuine life, uh, put celebrate, celebrate, uh, I can't even fucking say the word, but celebrate, uh, whatever. Just put, like, uh, what's it? The word famous aside and just look at them as real human beings. Like, even them, just like knowing that they're gonna pass soon sucks. Like, literally sucks because, you know, they might have been there your whole life, literally. And for them to like sense that something is wrong and they might not last. And then they say things where it's just like, okay, you don't take it in at the time. You think it's just normal. Maybe it's like, oh, what's that? And then the next day, it's just like, boom something happens and it's like they're dead it's like wow it's just like you know it's very sad um but yeah man i think it was the only superstar that didn't come back to the uh company after he left you know i think i could be wrong um but yeah i know china is one of them as well as we're going to listen to right now but 90s and early 2000s, China's life and career had a dramatic downfall. After leaving WWE, she created adult films and struggled with drugs. Despite this, China fought to turn her life around. She moved to Japan and became an English teacher. Just as things appeared to be improving for the ninth wonder of the world, tragedy struck. On April 17th, 2016, it was discovered that China had died. An autopsy later revealed the cause of her death was overdosing on alcohol combined with a number of drugs. In her like with china like there was a lot of things that was like really sad as well because like obviously we all know how it ended with wwe uh i think she left in 2000 maybe or 2001 something like that and the way it ended you know because obviously she was with triple h plus for that i did the whole thing i know there was a couple of features where she wanted to like you know make peace with the people in wwe and wanted to return but things didn't really turn out to be like that and then she ultimately died it was just like wow like if only if they like you know maybe thought about that then you know i mean it, it goes both ways like you know it's the company and maybe hers as well but the people in the comments you guys will let me know in detail like you know it's more than just that and it's actually this one's fault or whatever but it's just like you know it's just a shame um like she is in the hall of fame but i don't think she's in the hall of fame as her own like she got into dust in 2019 with uh dx but not as a solo like as an individual so when that day is gonna come i don't know but it's a shame it didn't happen when she was alive so yeah, man. In her final that days, sucks. China had been filming a documentary. The clips showed China with a black eye, but also displayed how troubled her life was. <coughs> I cannot stop the car. Despite how dark things were for her, China's final words before passing were ones of hope. Anyway, love y'all. I hope you have a beautiful day. Love y'all. Peace. For many fans, one of the hardest hitting deaths in all of wrestling was the passing of Eddie Guerrero. Oh, wow. The day before his death, Eddie was traveling to Minneapolis for a WWE show. Guerrero was flying with his nephew Chavo, and during the flight, Eddie abruptly passed out. It didn't seem serious at the time, and once the plane landed, both Eddie and his nephew went to their hotel. That evening, Chavo received a phone call from Eddie. Latino Heat said he needed to talk to Chavo, and Chavo obliged. After taking care of a few things, Chavo was ready to meet up with Eddie, but when he called his uncle back, Eddie said he was alright 
right and no longer needed to talk. Late that night, however, Eddie did call his wife, Vicky. Little did they both know, this would be the last time they would speak. In his final words before his death, Eddie told his wife he loved her. A few hours later, Eddie Guerrero was found dead in his hotel room. The cause being a so huge heart failure. Man. Chris Benoit's career was forever tarnished due to what happened during his final days. The day before Benoit took yeah. his family's lives and his own, Chris was supposed to meet up with Chavo Guerrero so they could travel together for a show. However, Benoit called mm. Chavo and told him he wouldn't be joining Guerrero because, according to Chris Benoit, his family had food poisoning. After that, Chris Benoit spoke his final words. And he goes, Chavo, Chavo, I go, yeah? And he goes, I love you. And I'm like, okay, brother, I, I, I love you too, man. That was weird. And I go, you, are you okay? He's like, yeah, I'm okay, man. Just, you know, I'm just really tired. And I said, okay, man, okay, well, you know, call me if you need to get any problem. So then, that's it. Later, on the morning of Chris Benoit's death, Benoit sent a text message to Chavo saying, the dogs are in the enclosed pool area, garage side door is open. And another message saying, my physical address is 130 Green Meadow Lane, Fayetteville, Georgia, 30215. These were the final messages Chris Benoit sent while he was alive. Once police began investigating Benoit's home, a note was found inside a Bible. It said, I'm preparing to leave this earth. The day before he died, the Ultimate Warrior said something- I wanna something say something about that, that as well. Um, yeah, that was actually, very uncomfortable to watch um because some people we have a lot of opinions on chris and uh you know um the people that hate him we understand the people that respect his wrestling stuff like that uh whenever you hear about the ending you know it depends on how you feel on the day you know when discussing about chris because it's like at the end of the day when you listen to it sometimes it's always going to feel uncomfortable like always and i definitely agree with that like it's always going to be uncomfortable so you know things do happen and the whole thing's just tragedy like i know there's a video of his entrance where like he made an entrance during eddie Guerrero's um tribute and he just looked very different and it's like since eddie died he wasn't the same person but then there's a lot of things that also happen but then it's like you know to take out on your wife and your child is just unforgivable but he had a lot of demons man and you know i feel sorry for the family that had to suffer as well because things could have been different um uh yeah it's just uh it's just one of those that still makes me think that what could have been you know because that did not even have to happen and it's just sad that i don't even know if that's even the right word to describe this tragedy but it's just it's just mind-blowing what just happened. It's crazy. Um, but, like I said, yeah, it's just unfortunate it happened. And I do feel sorry for every single person that was involved in that tragedy, including those that are maybe not family-related, like Chavo and stuff like that. Um, it's just... And the family of Chris as well. It's just... Um, yeah, that was a difficult one. So... Mm. So if you want me to see more of these kind of videos, then I suggest you comment down below what you want me to react to next and subscribe if you're new. So I see you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.